the Kyle Rittenhouse homicide trial is obviously in the headlines. Rittenhouse, as you probably know, killed two BLM protesters, Anthony Huber and Joseph Rosenbaum, and severely injured a third, Gage Grasskutz, um, shot off his bicep almost entirely. Rittenhouse was 17 at the time, and he felt compelled to stand up to the Black Lives Matter protesters and demonstrators. And he said his explicit desire was to protect property. Now, again, he was 17 at the time, but he killed two people. And he took an AR-15 rifle to Kenosha. And he ultimately killed people over protecting Kyle Rittenhouse from in the situation that he put himself in with a firearm. Yes. Now, we're going to watch this footage from yesterday of him crying on the stand. Or at least appearing to be crying. You guys can take take with it what you will either in my opinion he's faking or he's just kind of a weird dude we don't really know but this moment has caused someone like jd vance to call the entire trial child abuse uh, not that they care about black and brown children being tried as adults to a degree that is uh very disproportionate with the rest of the population but here's kyle rittenhouse on the stand died um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski, and there were <laughs> there were three people right there. This <laughs> That's what I <laughs> That's what I run. <laughs> We're gonna just take it. It's time for our break anyway. You, you can uh, just relax for a minute, sir. Um, we're going to take a break, uh, about uh, 10 minutes, and please don't talk about the case during the break. What, read, watch, so listen, you see the us. emotional break. Yeah, it looks like the sort of kid you'd want uh, going uh, um, in a different state to protect property with a gun. Or having access to the gun. I mean, I, whatever. That That's a whole separate conversation. Uh, he, he took that from his uncle, right? Was that the case? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, look, uh, I... I I'm not going to, I think, make uh, uh, make a claim about whether or not that is real or not. It's it's a little off, but at the same time, he's scared for himself, uh, and that can produce tears in and of themselves uh, or a severe reaction. What I do want to focus on, even though that was the moment that went most viral from the case yesterday is the judge who, as I mentioned in headlines, admonished the prosecution a few times and seemed to take quite a favorable posture towards the defense. Um, this has also been his reputation in Wisconsin, and it was why the prosecution was pretty adamantly against him being a part of this Rittenhouse case. So there were a, a few moments in which he yelled at the prosecution that you can look up and, and, and we can get into it another time. But a separate moment happened uh, in conjunction with those other moments of admonishment that raised a lot of eyebrows. The judge's phone went off in the middle of the trial and it p played a particular song that seems in keeping with his past history. I, I don't think that's necessarily what I'm supposed to do. But I think the court has to make some findings as it relates to the bad faith on the part of the prosecution. And if the court makes a finding that uh, the actions that I had talked about were done in bad faith, then I think both elements uh, that's, uh, I'm what, I'm proud to be an American? God bless, God, bless the God bless the USA. And particularly the version that I remember quite vividly because I went to uh, many Trump rallies at my previous gig with TYT, and that was Trump's walk-on song. 
Now, you could say, wow, that's a coincidence. Maybe he's just a patriot. Um, and I, usually that does coincide quite well with fascism, that self-identification. But this Will Bunch thread, um, it's okay, Bradley, I have it. This Will Bunch thread uh, is, I think, going to paint a, a picture that's a lot more damning. So this judge, Bruce Schroeder, he first was noticed early in his 40 plus year career on the bench in 1987. He made headlines requiring AIDS tests for sex workers. Told he'd be challenged for violating civil liberties, Schroeder said, I hope so. By 2006, Judge Schroeder had such a bad reputation for his outrageous style and stiff sentences that hundreds of defendants had requested a different judge, causing a massive backlog in Kenosha County courts. Schroeder's highest profile case before Rittenhouse was in 2008, when a man found guilty of murdering his wife with antifreeze, and Schroeder doled out a life sentence, but he botched it. An appeals court tossed the conviction, and Schroeder made an evidentiary mistake. Just this year, the appeals court overturned the judge for public shaming of a 28-year-old woman convicted of retail theft. He ruled the woman couldn't enter a store without telling management about her criminal past. So, as I mentioned, there was a reason why the prosecution was wary of having him on this case. But he's not an outlier with judges throughout the country. This is why Democrats winning is important. It's, it's completely insufficient, but it's important because when Republicans win statewide and when they win on the federal level, and McConnell has been on the federal level incredibly effective in this manner, they stack courts with judges like this. Now, this is in Wisconsin. It's a separate situation, but there are a lot more court uh, judge, judges like this judge, like this Judge Schroeder, than there are that are not like him, and it's just going to increase in numbers based on the organization of the right and also uh, the, the the focus um, and the money behind it. And if the left doesn't treat these with these judgeships with the seriousness that they deserve, you're going to have many instances like this. <laughs>